Welcome to NextGen Tesla. If someone mentioned that for just a little over $80,000, you could become the owner of a Tesla-built electric plane. Oh. Your first reaction would most likely be disbelief. That reaction is understandable, because the same kind of skepticism surrounded the idea of electric cars 15 years ago. At that time, the concept seemed far-fetched. Yet today it has grown into a worldwide movement that transformed the auto industry. What Tesla proposes with aviation goes beyond motors, batteries, and electric propulsion. It sets in motion a chain reaction, a surprisingly low purchase price, much lower operating expenses, a built-in ecosystem of intelligent charging, production methods executed on a truly industrial scale, and a reliance on software systems that place safety as the top priority. The combination of these factors directly challenges the long-standing dominance of companies like Boeing and points toward a future in air travel that is simpler, cheaper, and potentially far closer than most people expect. With this vision in mind, the Tesla Super Electric plane emerges as an aircraft that could reshape not just the small private market but also commuter travel, training, and local services. At the core of this disruption is the shocking price tag. At about $83,595, the Tesla Super Electric plane enters the market at a cost that is dramatically lower than the traditional 4-5 to five seat. Its piston-powered aircraft segment for reference, the widely known Cessna 172 one of the most common training in general. Aviation aircraft sells for somewhere between $400,000 and $600,000. A Piper Archer TX falls into the range of $400,000 to over $500,000, while a Cirrus SR-22, seen as one of the more advanced small aircraft, surpasses the $1 million mark. Compared against these figures, Tesla's entry-level price lands at only a fraction of the cost. Somewhere between one-fifth and one-tenth of the normal barrier to ownership, that drop in price changes the dynamics entirely, suddenly making it possible for individual owners, flying clubs, flight schools, or small service providers to consider owning and operating planes instead of being excluded by high entry costs. This democratization of access is fundamental, because for electric planes to thrive, they must not only be affordable to purchase but also flown often, landing, recharging, and taking off again with high frequency. Fortunately, the United States already has the infrastructure to make this scenario viable. Out of nearly 19,500 total airports in the country, about 5,100 are public use facilities. That dense and decentralized grid of airports means local and regional operations can be based much closer to communities. Industrial parks or highways, instead of relying on the major commercial hubs, with the cost of entry so much lower, it is realistic to imagine smaller operators scattered across the map, each with a few aircraft ready to meet regional demand. Another angle to appreciate the pricing is through the economic data of the general aviation industry. In 2024, the General Aviation Manufacturers Association reported that deliveries reached a total value of about $31 billion, it's largely because the purchase price of each unit is so high. If Tesla enters with a machine that costs one-tenth the price, yet still performs practical missions, then the pent-up demand at the individual and small business level could be unlocked, especially for purposes where budget has always been the main obstacle, as this barrier falls. The Tesla plane doesn't just create ownership opportunities, it actually enables useful missions. With a few hundred miles of range, Intertown travel becomes practical. Commuters can hop from one city to another, short-haul air taxis can emerge, and even light cargo runs can be handled efficiently. All of these applications rely on the existing small airport network, meaning the plane can be utilized daily in a way that builds consistent revenue streams. Tesla isn't trying to fight bowing directly in the mainline passenger jet market. Boeing's expertise is in the 737, 787, 777, and large cargo aircraft. Instead, the Tesla plane makes its mark on the edges, where small propeller aircraft and charter services operate. Two types of impact are likely direct substitution on very short routes where customers now use small traditional aircraft, and an indirect challenge to Boeing's vast service and aftermarket business. Boeing's global services division alone generated 
nearly $20 billion in 2024. If short-haul missions begin migrating toward electrified planes at a fraction of the price, that service-based revenue starts to face downward pressure. Even if Boeing has no model priced at $83,000, the erosion of the service ecosystem could be substantial. Still, the purchase price is only the first factor. The true measure of survival in aviation is the cost per flight hour. Here, electric propulsion has two crucial advantages. First, the electric motor is far simpler, with very few moving parts. It requires no oil changes, no complex fuel-air mixing systems, and far fewer consumables. This directly reduces maintenance costs per hour. Evidence from the electric car market shows that lifetime maintenance tends to be about half that of gasoline vehicles. And this lesson carries over into aviation. Second, the cost of energy is drastically lower. Take the example of a small certified electric trainer, the Pipistrel Velis Electro. It uses roughly 22 kilowatts of electricity for just under an hour of flight. At U.S. commercial electricity rates of around 12 to 13 cents per kilowatt hour, in mid-2025, the cost of charging the plane is between $2 and $3. Even when accounting for charging inefficiencies, each cycle costs only a few dollars. Compare that with a Cessna 172 trainer burning 9 to 10 gallons of aviation gasoline per hour. At about $6 a gallon in late 2025, that's over $60 just for fuel, before factoring in oil, spark plug replacement, and overhaul expenses. This stark gap in operating cost forms. The foundation of Tesla's potential advantage, because each flight hour costs so much less. Business models become more flexible. Fleet operators can offer short trips at gentler prices. Making routes of 50 to 150 miles between towns with small airports more financially sustainable. The same network of 5,000 public airports already exists, so nothing new has to be built for takeoff and landing. Lower hourly costs combined with higher aircraft utilization equates to steady cash flow and scalable operations. Boeing may not notice a direct threat in their long-haul airliner business. But on the periphery short commuter flights, and demand air taxis, and light cargo Teslas, advantage is clear. The fuel side also reinforces this point. Jet fuel prices have fluctuated between $2 and $2.5 per gallon wholesale and R significantly higher at the retail level of fixed base operators. Electricity, priced by the kilowatt is more predictable and often far cheaper on a per cycle basis. The economics therefore tilt heavily in favor of electricity, especially on routes with frequent short cycles. However, one major challenge remains. All the cost advantage evaporates if the aircraft cannot recharge quickly enough between flights. This is where Tesla's air supercharger network concept comes into play. Instead of treating airports merely as places to refuel, Tesla envisions them as smart charging nodes. These would consist of a high-power converter, a megawatt-class DC connector, and an on-site energy storage buffer. During peak usage, the buffer supplies steady power. During off-peak times, it refills from the grid or on-site solar arrays. The real question becomes not whether the plane can charge, but how quickly it can get back in the air. At megawatt charging levels, restoring 3 to 400 kilowatts of energy for the plane would take roughly 20 to 30 minutes. Add in the time for docking, wheel chalking, and pre-flight checks. And the entire turnaround can be as short as 25 to 40 minutes. That speed increases the number of daily flights an aircraft can make, raising utilization and lowering costs per seat. Fast charging isn't the only approach. Modular battery packs form the second pillar of Tesla's strategy. Instead of waiting for a full charge, a ground crew could remove a depleted module and swap in a pre-charged one. With guided rails, electromechanical latches that carry structural loads, quick cooling connectors, and intelligent handshakes between the battery management system and the airframe, the process could be completed in roughly the same time it takes to refuel a conventional aircraft. Operators would then have the option to fast charge when time is available, swap when time is tight, or combine both for efficiency. For this to work, several requirements must be met. Energy density per cell needs to approach 400 watt-hours per kilogram to keep the aircraft within target weight and range. 
The hardware must ensure electrical safety with arc detection and active cooling. And software must coordinate power distribution, scheduling, and health monitoring across multiple modules. If these systems align, the experience at the airport becomes just as seamless as charging an electric car only scaled to aviation needs. Economically, higher daily cycles spread the fixed costs of ownership across more flights, meaning average seat costs drop and operators can lower fares while maintaining profitability. This is how the air supercharger plus modular battery infrastructure transforms technical.